So I want to talk a little bit about the structure for my film Turning Into Gods. Um, when I conceived of the concept trailer, the idea was to provide a really sort of energetic journey uh, to track down those maverick men of science and biotechnology and nanotechnology and, 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 and sort of these creative mind hackers uh, um, who were talking about this period in, in, as technology evolves exponentially when we'll merge with our machines in a complete symbiosis and become post-human or transhuman and reverse engineer all the processes of our biology and basically become gods. But this idea of the singularity, of this complete merger of man and machine to happen at some point in the very near future has been criticized by some. And so one of the other things that I'm going to explore in the film is the fact that uh, there's been other singularities that have occurred in, in history that have caused radical seismic shifts um, in the way life is organized um, almost as, as, as important and as dramatic as the ones that Ray Kurzweil talks about in the very near future. So that first singularity, according to Kevin Kelly, is the invention of language. For millions and billions of years, you know, life evolved on the, at, on the Earth under the forces of natural selection. It evolved at a very, very slow pace. 100,000 years ago was when we finally emerged physically the way we continue to be today. From 100,000 years ago to 50,000 years ago, nothing much happened from generation to generation. Then 50,000 years ago, something remarkable happened. 50,000 years ago, the invention of language basically reorganized the and reprogrammed the operating system of the brain, allowed the brain to talk to itself, which allowed it to sort of invent with purpose and deliberation. This slingshotted our species. We took over the planet, where today we ponder black holes, write, you know, musical melodies, make wonderful films, reflect upon our role in the cosmos. All this started with the invention of language. The second singularity I want to look at in the film is the singularity that happened in the 1960s. I, I'm fascinated by this idea of the uh, of the the intersection of of, of of psychedelic culture and cybernetic culture. This book, What the Dormouse Said, and we're going to have to interview John Markoff, talks about how in the 1960s, in the Stanford campus and and Xerox Corporation, all these the confluence of organizations that were working on like augmented intelligence and artificial intelligence, and 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 they first started thinking about computers as a way to augment the human mind, and then the collision of this with the psychedelic culture of the 1960s, this idea of like of like revolution and personal liberation and overcoming the limitations of self and mind and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, this confluence brought together all these like engineers and computer programmers and, and whatnot that were all of a sudden like meeting with hippies and taking drugs and talking about using the technology of augmented intelligence or the computer and shrink it to the personal size and computers could become tools of personal liberation. Timothy Leary ended up embracing this and said he knew now that psychedelic culture was merely uh, the catalyst and instigator for cyber culture or cyberdelic culture, the idea that, we, that reality could be remade, that we could create a, 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 a virtual world conceived of by the mind where consciousness could be completely disembodied. And when you think about it, that was the second big singularity because the world of marvels that we enjoy today is is you know could be could be called to could be said to be indistinguishable from magic by somebody like Arthur C. Clarke. What we're getting to now, uh, when Kurzweil talks about his singularity, is full symbiosis, uh, biology and computers, synthetic life, reprogram our biochemistry, and turn into gods. So there was this recent essay by this other guy that says that we're sort of, we, the singularity has come and gone already. Like, And of course, it has. This is the second singularity of the computer revolution, and we're living it today. I mean, let's say I, I Skype with somebody in New York or Europe. Well, you could argue the fact that they're having a conversation with my consciousness over in Europe, even though I'm here. So technically, my consciousness is disembodied, and we already have remade reality so that we can disembody our consciousness and engage with other sentient life forms in other parts of the world and leave our bodies behind. We're already doing it. Telecommunication is just an example of that. Video conferencing, engaging with the internet. Our consciousness is engaging with other consciousness separate from, from 
from from our immediate geographical surroundings. So that's we've already hijacked the mind and put it out into cyberspace. It's already there um, to to a certain degree. And then the next singularity is what happens when we use this information technology and this ability to manipulate reality like it was an information file. Well, that's what biotechnology is to reprogram the information processes of our biology and basically remake ourselves the way we conceived of and and, and remade the reality of our minds, which is cyberspace. See, first the digital world was this alternate cyberspace where we took our minds to, but our bodies were still the same. And if we unplugged from the computer, we were not in the cyber world. But augmented reality is when the cyber world all of a sudden is overlaid onto the real world. The point being, eventually we will merge these two worlds, the biological and the virtual, will finally, you know, enter that sublime consummation, and that's what turning into gods ultimately uh, states states in the end. So that's really the goal. There's already been singularities that fucking wow the imagination. By showing the first two, you make the Kurzweil one not sound that far-fetched. And in the end, people come out of the theater thinking, wow, this is actually really feasible. This doesn't sound so crazy anymore. There's already been crazy stuff that's crazy that's happened before, and yet it's happened. You understand? That's how I make the case for the film.